Welcome to the FY22 Hearing Restoration Research Program Funding Opportunity Presentation. I am Dr. Tian Wang, the Hearing Restoration Research Program Manager. After an introduction to the Hearing Restoration Research Program, also known as HRRP, I will go over our FY22 funding opportunity including the key features of the award mechanism and application dates, before briefly talking about the review process and ending with a list of resources. Now, the HRP is within the Congressionally Directed Medical Research Programs, or CDMRP. The CDMRP implements and manages funding for biomedical research programs as directed by Congress. The CDMRP is within the Department of Defense as part of the U.S. Army Medical Research and Development Command. In fiscal year 2022, Congress appropriated $1.54 billion for 35 programs, including $10 million for HRRP. Hearing loss is highly prevalent among veterans and the American public. According to the most recent data from the Department of Veterans Affairs, more than 1.3 million veterans suffer from service-related hearing loss. The National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders estimates more than 30 million Americans over the age of 12 have hearing loss in both ears. Disabling hearing loss is particularly common among older adults and is a risk factor for cognition decline. Although hearing loss has a profound impact on quality of life, there is no drug approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for hearing restoration. In 2017, Congress established the HRRP to target this important research area. The HRP identifies two major obstacles to hearing restoration. Over the past decades, animal studies produced significant advances in the understanding of hearing loss and regeneration mechanisms in the inner ear. However, due to the location and unique anatomical features of the inner ear, it is very difficult to access or directly examining the inner ear of human patients, creating a significant challenge for the clinical validation and translation of preclinical findings. This is the first major obstacle. The inaccessibility of the inner ear also hinders the advancement of diagnostic capabilities beyond behavioral functional tests. A lack of precision diagnostic capability creates a second major obstacle to hearing restoration. As potential therapeutics treating sensory, neural, synaptic, or central auditory dysfunction are discovered in animal studies, it will be crucial for the success of clinical trials to correctly diagnose the pathobiology of sensory neural hearing loss in patients match patient populations to appropriate interventions and accurately measure intervention outcomes. Overcoming the major obstacles to hearing restoration is HRRP's number one priority. We challenge the scientific research community to design innovative studies for precision diagnostics, to validate preclinical results, and translate discoveries to clinical applications. HRRP's second priority is to advance forward diagnosis. The goal is to quickly screen for acute auditory system injury in resource-poor or remote environments, including those injuries not readily diagnosed by pure tone audiogram. The techniques or methods should eventually be compatible with portable platforms and applicable by a non-specialist such as a physician assistant, medic, or corpsman. Applications to the HRRP must address at least one of four focus areas, 
which support our program priorities. First, research to accelerate translation of biological regeneration or repair mechanisms into therapies that treat auditory system injury and restore auditory function. Second, diagnostic tests that help differentiate sensory, neural, synaptic, and central processing disorders that may inform applicability and outcomes for current or future hearing restoration therapeutics. Third, developing reliable in vitro human models to facilitate the understanding, derivation, and characterization of human auditory cells or to facilitate the evaluation of hearing restoration therapies. And lastly, developing and or validating techniques or methods beyond the audiogram to diagnose acute auditory system injury in austere environments. Currently, the HRRP offers the focused research award mechanism with three funding levels. Funding level one supports exploratory high-risk, high-reward research. In two, supports advancement of more mature research toward clinical translation. Funding level three supports translational research with a pilot clinical trial component. Together, the three funding levels cover projects at different phases of the research pipeline, from initial ideas to pilot clinical trials. The full funding opportunity announcement, also known as program announcement, can be viewed on CDMRP website and is also searchable on grants.gov. Applicants are responsible to select the funding level most appropriate for the research proposal. This is done during pre-application submission. The selection should be based on the stage and maturity level of the research project rather than the amount of the budget. Here are some tips to help you make the selection. If you are testing an innovative idea with no or little preliminary data, you may consider funding level one. While preliminary data is not required for this funding level, it is important that you provide a strong rationale for your idea and demonstrate that your research team has the necessary expertise to test the idea. Funding level two is appropriate for continued development of knowledge or technology from basic to translational stages. To apply for funding level two, you must have preliminary data to demonstrate that first, you have answered the questions leading up to the proposed project and are ready to ask the next set of questions. And second, your research strategy to answer those questions is feasible. If you are finishing the last steps of translational research and beginning to make plans for clinical trials, you may consider funding level three. The proposal must have both a translational research component and a pilot clinical trial component. A funding level three award is meant to support the collection of data for regulatory approval, the application of regulatory approval, and a small scale pilot clinical trial to collect preliminary data to inform the feasibility, rationale, and design of subsequent clinical trials. The program announcement provides additional details on the difference between pilot and regular clinical trials. Regardless of which funding level you are applying to, if your research aims to develop a therapeutic for hearing loss, the HRRP asks you to incorporate some additional considerations in your research design. Some therapeutics or interventions aim to restore hearing in patients with established hearing loss. Hair cell regeneration is an example of this type of intervention. If you are developing this type of intervention, we ask that your experimental design supports the eventual connection of the intervention to precision diagnostics 
and to patient-specific pathobiology. Explain how pathobiology will be examined, documented, and interpreted in your hearing loss model, both before and after treatment. Explain how clinically relevant your hearing loss model is. Who are the corresponding patient populations? Envision how might these patients be identified by precision diagnostics. How might you evaluate what is the appropriate population for your intervention? How might you evaluate the effect of your intervention in these patients? Another category of therapeutics or interventions aims to preserve cells or synapses after acute auditory injury. Because such interventions are to be administered soon after injury or even before injury happens, there is no time to obtain a thorough diagnosis. If you are developing this type of intervention, it is important to consider why people should and will take it when they don't have an injury diagnosis. Obviously, such interventions need to be extremely safe, and you should consider what would be the criteria to establish safety, why such criteria will likely be accepted by the FDA, and more importantly, why you expect the potential users to accept such criteria. Three applications are due July 22nd of this year. A programmatic panel consisting of basic and clinical scientists and consumer advocates with special expertise or interest in hearing restoration will screen the pre-applications based on criteria outlined in the program announcement. A subset of pre-applicants will be invited in early September to submit full applications due on November 30th. Full applications will undergo a two-tier review process, which is used by all programs at the CDMRP as recommended by the National Academy of Medicine. The first tier is peer review, which evaluates technical merit. Peer review is done by panels of scientists clinicians, and other specialists with expertise in the area of the applications being reviewed and consumers with experience of hearing loss. Peer review criteria are outlined in the program announcement in detail and categorized as scored and unscored. Several descriptive elements are listed under each criterion. These elements are how the criterion is evaluated. So ensure your application addresses each point. Write your proposal with the peer review criteria in mind. Clearly explain how your work meets the requirements. The second tier is programmatic review. The programmatic panel discusses applications with high technical merit as established during peer review and identifies the applications that best meet program goals. Applications are compared to each other in terms of the four programmatic review criteria as shown on the slide and also outlined in the program announcement. As a result, funding recommendations are made during this phase. A list of the HRRP programmatic panel members is published on our website. You may not contact these individuals about your application. They cannot be a co-investigator or consultant or write a support letter for you. But you can see who the members are. They will be your audience in both pre-application screening and programmatic review. Thank you for listening and for your interest in the HRRP. For more information, please visit the CDMRP and HRRP websites. On the CDMRP website, you will find videos that explain our application and review process in detail and provide tips for success. The CDMRP homepage also has a searchable database for previously funded projects. 
The HRRP homepage provides additional information on the program and a number of resource documents, including an FAQ for applicants.